Okay. Those of you working on reactions still, I'm going to go through the reactions for problems on page 167 and talk about some rules that if you use them with reactions and then follow through and you'll use them again with cutting any structure, it will pay off. Of course, we realize, I hope, soon that by putting things in a format, we can almost always use R cross F if we've got available tools such as available in AutoCAD or SketchUp, your calculators, Excel, where in fact we can break these things into the standard engineering notation. So these things are students seem to think are hard to do, but they will make your life easier. More or less, there's something akin to standards. One, work with colors and or layers, lots of them, and learn to organize them with a front end loading. For instance, forces underscore reactions, force, forces underscore applied, forces underscore resultant, any set of things you need to kind of organize and use colors. The second one, always show your force or moment and or moment reactions as positive even when you know they are not. In other words, you're always going to show them in the positive x and the positive y and you're always going to show them as would cause a positive moment. In other words, would cause a smile. Um, and that term of positive moment you'll see can get kind of odd when you're thinking about some things but make sure that you just definitely show which way you are assuming your reactions are going and if you then get the negative you know you went in the wrong direction or you know that you just changed the direction of what you show so sketch them on your free body diagrams as positive now on your side sketch you should be able you should be thinking to start on your side sketch as to what the structure looks like and you should just draft them the way you think they are but in your free body diagram, show them as positive. If forces, and I'm kind of torn on this one, but if forces are given with a direction, consider breaking them into X and Y components and the sketch the line of force for each component. That's one way to go about doing it. Otherwise, get really good at figuring out and guessing and or calculating your moment arm. And when you're in CAD, I would recommend you do it by figuring out the moment arm line from your spinny point perpendicular to the line of action. When you're doing it by hand, it's much easier sometimes to break these up into X and Y components and deal with the lines of force of the components. Four, remember that when doing moment calculation is the direction of the spin that gives the sign, not necessarily the direction of the force. So you write down the force magnitude, you write down the orthogonal distance, and then you write the sign in front of it depending on what it does with your right hand about the spinny point. Is it showing it going, your thumb going into the board or out of the board? Right hand rule. Finally, there's a lot of problems, trust and otherwise, where you can slide all of your forces. At least this is just for determining reactions. You can slide all of your forces to a common line, break them into components, and then use the lever rule. In other words, write down the given force, Write down the distance from the other support, and then write the distance down between the supports in your denominator, and do your calculations that way. That, if you can do the slides to a common line between reactions, is a great time saver. And you'll realize there's a lot of, uh, you could consider these tricks, they're just application usually of the rule of transmissibility, Farragnon's rule, and superposition. That said, here, if in fact you do that on problem 3.18, 3.19, 3.20, and 3.21 are what the formulas look like when you're solving for the reactions. Go to the first one, 3.18. If you write your sum of the moments about point A, that's what gives you your reaction at B in the X direction. Remember your reaction at B in the Y direction would go through point A, therefore it has no moment arm and it falls out of the equation. It's one of those hockey players. In problem 3.18, you realize because of the geometry at point A, you have a knowledge of the reaction at A and the Y to the reaction at A and the X. In fact, at least it's three-fifths in all reality. Um, 
the sign might be a little bit off there, but you know that it's going to be actually tension, and so you know this actually might be a negative 3 to 5, uh, or a 3 to, neg to negative 5. At B, you do not know what's going on in terms of that relationship because it is one of those trust members has the ability um, to kind of confound the equation. You have, in fact, two unknowns there, and it is a little bit tougher to solve for it. Now, you can do that when you do a solid moment method of the joints. All right, so that's one equation. Write it down, see if you can see where they come from. I'm pointing out you do the distance from the point. Put down the force first, the distance, and then the sign, and make sure it works out. Remember to write your right-hand coordinate system and what is positive moment. Problem 3.19. You realize even though the reactions are at A and H, you write your first sum of the moment about A, and realistically, you can then write your second sum of the moments about B. That's because you want to take the reaction at A in the X direction out of the equation. There are other ways to go about doing that, but if you notice here, I have broken down those components of that force that is out at E into two components. All right, we're going to keep this within the 10 minutes, so obviously I hope you remember you can stop these videos if in fact you are using them. Problem 3.20, you realize that sometimes it's a great idea to show the zero moment arm. That line of force with the 2,000 pounds coming down goes right through H, therefore it's moment arm if you're writing in the sum of the moments about H is equal to zero. Once again, breaking these components up this time not showing the math, but one more time seeing that 3-4-5 triangle thrown at you and don't get addicted to that. Uh, this would be 3.20, let's see, this was 3, I'm losing my top here, so this is 3.19, 3.20, and then finally, 3.21 is one where, in fact, you should start to be able to write the sum of the moments about A, the sum of the moments about E, but then start doing that in effect. Let me see if I can do that the way you would do your moment, and I'll kind of fill it up that way, how you would go about using that kind of lever rule. And in this case, I'll go to the review here. I will go to start inking. And then if we have this kind of thought out along this long axis, we have A and we have B, E, and so we write down our force, which is 24. Distance from the other support is 12. Distance between supports is 48. And we go to the other side, we write it as well, 24. Distance from the other support, 36. Distance between the supports, 48. You have to realize that this number here and this number there, so that number and that number equals 1. So that'll sign help you to show your negatives and the like. So that's really, in terms of solving for reactions, you, you do that as much as anything else. I want to point out that I've given you the equations and you should learn to do that. You should continue to work on the concept of more or less, more or less, and then sense. In other words, is it supposed to be for instance, something is spinning this way, so you have to spin back, or is it spinning this way, so you have to pull, and you kind of do that by side calculations. This will help you to truth right, your models. And I think you're going to have a chance to th do that a little bit in your capstone class when you do a balsa bridge. All right, thanks for listening. We will go through and give you a you know talk about right now. Um, you know, this week in class, how you go ahead and pick those spinny points and what your assumptions are when you break up structures. Remember, when you cut a truss, you know that it's either going to be compression or tension, and you know its direction. When you break up a, a cable, you know its direction, typically. When you break up a beam, you just know that it is shear, axial, and bending. Thanks for listening.